Howdy, it's Jim Arado, and this was, I believe, late February, early March 2021, eh, kind of about a year into the pandemic, roughly. Some friends took us over to Miamisburg, Ohio. Miamisburg, Ohio, not far from Dayton, and a really interesting little town. First off, this is a cute little town. Lots of neat little shops, lots of things to do. This is just pretty. I mean, this is just the kind of town you drive to, and it's it's just very pleasant. A lot of a lot of good weird history here too, and uh, yeah, we just we had a really good time. Our friends' kids love this town. They had been here before, and they were excited to go back because there's a shop that sells candy that they really loved, and they were excited to hit that store again. And this is a small Ohio town that just has a ton going on. From Wikipedia, uh, mentions that um, as of 2010, the population was 20,181. It's known for its large industry, mainly or for mainly for nuclear operations during World War II and retail factors such as the Dayton Mall commercial business area uh, which is partially located in Miami Township and the home to the Miami the Miamisburg Mound it, it, we would actually visit that mound and there's a great museum right across the street from it and in that area there's some some really really fascinating history anyway I'll, I'm gonna put up a couple of other videos about those I, I, I filmed this I've kind of been sitting on this this for a few months not really sure what to do with it. I like this area a lot. I was hoping to read up some more books on this, but I'm, I'm just not sure. If you know of some good books on this area, let me know, especially involving that uh, that whole nuclear thing and and the mounds. You know, you, you've got the old, uh, basically Indian mounds, if you, you can call them that, and that weird uh, nuclear history in this, this neck of the woods. Just Just some fascinating stuff. You know, a charming downtown area. We we walked into some cute little antique shops. As I mentioned, there was... Um, just go here. Just go here and park. There's a cute store that sells candy. My buddy's kids loved it. They had one of those things where you could fill up a box of candy for, you know, a few bucks or whatever. And they had all the old novelty candies that you loved as a kid. Just, just a lot of fun. Uh, we found a great little coffee shop. And, and this is just a neat little walkable town with, uh, with some great waterway and yeah, railroad stuff to see, too. I mean, there's just lots of stuff around here. And we, we just had a nice time. It's just a neat little town to, you know, you could pack a picnic lunch and just enjoy this town f on several different levels. Actually, let me suggest against packing a picnic lunch. There, there were a couple of neat restaurants... And there is a burger place that we actually stopped at. My friend insisted that we go to this little uh, wagon cart that sells burgers. And there's there's a Wikipedia entry on it alone. And we're about to go there here in just a second. We, we did pack some mustard and mayonnaise because they, uh, they're they a bit particular about the way they make their burgers. Yeah, and, and the, yeah we're going to be going down to this little corner here in a second to get some burgers. There was a, a line already. Uh, you had to wait in line. And uh, they, they only make their burgers a couple of different ways. But they, they were great little burgers. Yeah, here's the line. We were, we were in line. Yeah, from, from Wikipedia, it's that the Hamburger Wagon is a hamburger joint located on the sidewalk of the Market Square in Miamisburg, Ohio. It was opened in 1913 by Sherman Cocky Porter to help feed Red Cross workers and residents of the area rebuilding from the great flood it's a small wagon large enough for only two people to work side by side one cooks while the other one prepares the buns and handles the money the wagon still at approximately the same location where it originated is rolled away and stored indoors nightly the establishment has changed ownership hands several times throughout the years most recently bought by jack sperry uh, september 2008 from Michelle Lyons. Unchanged, however, is the flagship product. Small hamburgers cooked by oil in a large skillet and served on a roll with an onion, pickle, salt, and pepper. The burgers have cri uh, 
a crispness on the outside due to being deep fried and that sounds about right and I ate several of those burgers they were very good uh, we, we did we did add some mayonnaise to them though that that's uh, uh, that's something I kind of have to have on my burgers so yeah, and as you can see, it's just pretty through here. Let me read a little bit, though, to you about the history of this area. And, and I'm, I'm going to start around or a little after World War II and just kind of paraphrase Wikipedia some. The mound plant, built in 1947, was situated on 306-acre site of the city, 10 miles south of Dayton. Uh, workers numbered more than 2,000 at the height of the production, made plutonium detonators for nuclear weapons. Their work was very classified. The plant had a small army of security guards and was ringed by chain link fencing and razor wire. When the Cold War ended, the plant discontinued the deton detonator work, but it continued to make nuclear power generators for space probes. Uh, in 1993, the Department of Energy decided to end all production at the mound. The move affected over 2,000 employees. And by 1996, cleanup of radioactive and hazardous waste was the main activity at the plant. And it goes on some more. I, I think that's interesting. Then, well, I guess before, yeah. September 10th, 1978, 15 cars of a Conrail freight train derailed in this area as the result of a hot box caused by uneven distribution of steel ingots in a gondola loaded at Buffalo, New York by Republic Steel. Eight years later, July of 1986, another train derailed on the CSX transportation line on the west bank of the river, igniting ye yellow phosphorus contained in a tanker car. 7,000 local residents were initially evacuated, but during clearing operations the next day, another large escape of product uh, resulted in a reignition of the phosphorus. This led to the evacu evacuation of 30,000 people across southern Montgomery County, the largest evacuation in Ohio history. And there, there's more information about that. A, nit a nitrous oxide distillation column at a local chemical plant known as Isotec exploded on September 21st, 2003. Yeah, so they've had some nuclear uh, production stuff going on. I guess that's the best way to say Yeah, nuclear-related production, I guess you could say. Chemical trains kind of having accidents, other accidents. Very interesting. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I don't know, what can you say about that? And then there's also the Miamisburg Mound. It's the location of a prehistoric Indian burial, burial mound believed to have been built by the Adena culture about 1000 to 200 BCE. Once serving as an ancient burial site, the mound has become perhaps the most recognizable historic landmark in Miamisburg. So yeah, I mean that's, uh, man, if, if you're into the X-Files kind of stuff, this town has it. They've got the burial mounds strange railroad disasters chemical related things that have happened and cold war uh, secrecy going on my, my buddy who brought us here grew up some in this area and near the area and he mentioned he remembered you know like going to church there would be people that uh, you know worked for you know with for the I guess among those 2,000 employees and it was a very secret thing. They did not talk about what they did. And I think it was just kind of a given. You just really didn't ask them, hey, what do you do? And I think that's fascinating. As I mentioned, there is a museum dedicated to that, to that uh, Cold War era and what they were doing. We swung through there. And, you know, I love history. I love space. There's, you know, I love a lot of stuff. When it comes to a lot of that scientific stuff with chemicals and all that, I have a hard time wrapping my brain around it. It's, it's one of those things that I don't quite get. But we did visit that museum and I, I taped some, and I will try to get up a video of that in the near future. Uh, we talked to a fellow who used to work there, and he was some sort, um, he was somewhat of a, um, 
and I guess you would say almost a guide there who, who talked to us quite a bit. He was fun to listen to. But yeah, Miamisburg, Ohio. Let me know what I missed. Let me know if there's some books I need to read on this place. A very fascinating little town.